Year number one of the Josh Giddy experience was definitely a huge success for the OKC Thunder. In his first season, the six foot eight Australian has recorded the three youngest triple doubles in NBA history while averaging 12.5 points, 7.8 rebounds, and 6.4 assists in 54 games of action, which numbers illustrate his versatile all around game. But as a Thunder fan myself, I'm gonna be the first one to tell you that for sure, Giddy wasn't an efficient scorer last season, both from the field and the three point line. And and overall, the 47.8 true shooting percentage that he put up was actually 10 points below the league average. However, despite that, Giddy still earned an All-NBA Rookie second team selection but most importantly, he has still established himself as one of the NBA's premier playmakers and not only from his draft class. We're talking about Giddy being one of the best passers currently in the NBA and also one of the best among all rookies in NBA history. Cause not only did Giddy lead his draft class in assists per game but his 32 2.3% assist rate was actually the 12th highest in the NBA last season. And for context, the rookie with the next best assist rate in the league was Ayo Desunmu who ranked number 68 overall. Plus, the 7.3 assists per 36 minutes that Giddy registered also puts him in a tie at 8th place with a great Magic Johnson all-time in terms of assists per 36 minutes among all rookies in NBA history. This guy basically has future point guard written all over him. However, the playmaking is only one component of Giddy's skill set, and the question is, how can he actually elevate his game to the next level for OKC? Cause as a not so quick primary initiator, but who has advantages in terms of size, court vision, and creativity with the ball, I think one just can't help but envision a timeline we're in. Josh Giddy fully develops the other areas of his game in order for him to be able to leverage his natural playmaking gifts much better, which should only make it easier for him to become a star level player. The good thing is, after he was controversially left off last season's All-NBA Rookie First Team, it seems like Giddy's primed to prove all his doubters wrong this 2022-2023 NBA season. And in this video, we'll dive into some of his film from the preseason and from OKC's first game of the year to understand why a sophomore season breakout could easily happen for Josh Giddy. So what's good everyone, it's We're All Balls here and as always, if you do enjoy this video, please do hit that like button or do click that subscribe button. It only takes a second of your time, but it will be much appreciated. So let's get to it. In basketball, we know that the basic principle is, in order to create open shots for your teammates, first you must effectively be able to pass and score, cause naturally, top offensive players should be able to draw at least two defenders on the ball and from there, they can take advantage of the attention and locate the opening created by the double team. The thing is, Josh Giddy isn't your usual number two option in the team, he's not yet an able shot creator which is why, you rarely see defenders trapping him and affording him the space to easily create for his teammates. But Giddy isn't your typical playmaker as well, even without being a scoring threat, because of his elite court vision, size and pinpoint precision, he's already able to manufacture passing windows himself even in the most difficult situations. Just how often do you actually see a 20 year old player who's already elite in terms of manipulating pick and roll coverages, who's also adept at finding the open man on the weak side, and who basically can just dish out any kind of pass on the court with either hand, at any speed and out of any angle. In this pick and roll play, watch how fast Giddy processes things. In the split second he gets the switch, watch him position himself to be able to dish out the precise bounce pass to the rolling JRE. Here, watch OKC run a high double drag screenplay for Giddy. The speed at which he attacks the driving lane freezes the defense, and from there, he throws the beautiful one handed skip pass to the weak side, setting up Trey Man for the easy floater. Then here, watch the two man game between Lou Dort and Giddy. Dort is about to use the screen by Jay Will, and Giddy already reads the action beforehand as he throws the quick one handed laser pass to Dort right on the open spot. If you come to think of it, Giddy's making all those advanced passing reads without even attracting double teams and without even probing the defense himself. Well for sure, Giddy already has the tools to be a potent shot creator. He's got good positional size as well as the ability to change pace and directions with a ball in his hands. But the thing he did
didn't have as a rookie was a reliable jump shot. So I'm wondering just how much more passing windows he can create once he's already able to demand more attention, particularly as a jump shooter. But here's the thing, as a rookie, almost one third of Giddy shot attempts came from behind the arc, but his 26.3% shooting rate from deep was actually the third worst percentage among all rookies who attempted at least 100 three-pointers, only ahead of Alperen Shengun and Jalen Suggs. Well, dissecting his three-point shooting by categories is far more interesting though, as you can see that, Giddy actually connected on a decent 32.7% of his pull-up three-pointers despite the small volume, and while he attempted far more catch-and-shoot three-pointers, he struggled to knock those down with any sort of consistency at only 24.5%. Well, without a doubt, the shooting inconsistencies are understandable considering Giddy didn't really enter the league as a knockdown shooter, but at this point, I think the reason for him to develop a steady jump shot is quite simple. The better he gets shooting off the dribble, the more he'll be able to hurt opponents in the pick and roll, and the better he gets shooting off the catch, the more he'll be able to hurt teams off the ball. The second one seems more mandatory right now though, considering Shea will most definitely initiate possessions from the point of attack for OKC the majority of the time. However, to be honest, the learning curve for both Giddy and Shea together on the floor has been quite rough in their first year. By point differential, when sharing the floor together, Giddy only ranked 12th in the team among Shea's teammates in terms of net rating, while Shea on the other hand ranked just 7th among Giddy's teammates as well. And for sure, Giddy being more of a reliable threat off the catch should only create immediate synergy between the two, and thankfully, one thing that should give us OKC fans optimism about Giddy's shooting growth is the off-season hiring of shot doctor Chip England, who served as the San Antonio Spurs shooting coach for 17 seasons and who has been responsible for helping Spurs legend Tony Parker become one of the league's premier mid-range scorers and also for modifying Kawhi Leonard's release point turning him into a certified knockdown shooter. Well, it's definitely way too early in Giddy's sophomore year, but if you've seen some of the perimeter looks he created for himself in the preseason, you could just tell that Chip England definitely has something to work with in terms of Giddy's shooting stroke as well as his dribble to shot transfer mechanics which don't appear to be broken at all. Here, watch Giddy create his own shot out of the double drag play. He forces the switch against the bigger Isaiah Stewart, then he uses the stutter step before pulling up from 16 feet with a hand on his face. Then here, watch how Giddy hunts for a mismatch. He gets the initial switch, but he gets no space to operate. So he waits for the ghost screen from Poku, and upon getting the space he needs, he just fires away with the pull-up three-pointer. At the very least, I think it's safe to say that Josh Giddy already displays comfort and confidence as a perimeter shooter, and sure, not buying into his long-range potential as of the moment is understandable, but if you're looking for more signs that would give you optimism with his shooting touch, then you probably might want to look into his floater as well. Cause as a rookie, the floater territory which is around 5 to 9 feet from the basket was an area we're in he actually displayed some real proficiency and comfort. In fact, floaters and running shots actually did look like his go-to move in isolation. And overall, Giddy shot 41.7% on 1.6 attempts from floater territory last season, ranking him in the 44th percentile league-wide which is definitely not a bad number for a rookie. Here, Giddy uses the high pick from Poku. From there, he drives and snake dribbles around his man while staying smart enough to launch the floater before he's within the reach of Rudy Gobert. Then here in semi-transition, you see Giddy with a quick change of speed to get past Jalen Noel, but watch him go for the running shot to avoid getting tagged by the help defender. Well, with his positional size, you would normally expect Giddy to get to the rim more often and not just settle for floaters, and he actually did. When he had open driving lanes, he was able to use his straight line speed and ability to change pace to get to the basket, and from there, he was also able to contort his body in order to score in the interior. But this wasn't the case when longer, quicker, and stronger defenders were placed in front of him as the defensive pressure often knocked him off balance and displaced him off his dribble, while contact around the basket still obviously gave him a tough time finishing. Overall, Giddy shot 57% at the rim as a rookie, which only ranked him in the 26th percentile among all players listed as wings in the entire NBA. I think this is where some added weight and strength can help Giddy capitalize on his drives, and the good thing is, as early as the first couple of games in the Summer League, he already looked bigger, stronger, and a little bit more explosive when attacking the basket. 
Here, Giddy doesn't have a driving lane, but once he gets the switch against the smaller Bones Highland, watch him with a change of pace as he drives and transfers the ball to his right hand mid air before finishing against two defenders. Here, in transition, watch Giddy attack Rudy Gobert. Again, you see the change of pace, the transfer of the ball to the right hand, and the nice underhanded finish. Well, for sure, even with all these improvements, I think it would be unreasonable to expect Giddy to become the most explosive driver out there, because even now that he's put on some weight, you can see that he doesn't really rely on a quick first step but rather on his size and mastery of pace. But again, I think all of this goes back to how Giddy works on his shooting touch, because the more he gets his jumper going, the more you can expect defenses to close out on him, which also means the quicker Giddy can get more easy driving lanes for himself. Sure, at this point, the playmaking is still the best part of Josh Giddy's game, but as good as he's been, the scary part is we definitely haven't seen the full extent of his ability yet. He averaged 11.6 potential assists as a rookie, which is also the 23rd most in the entire NBA. So imagine just how many more assists he would have averaged even if only half of those potential assists were actually converted. I think this only makes the idea of him sharing the floor with Chet Holmgren next year much more exciting cause having Chet alongside him should easily give Giddy maybe at least 3 more assists per game out of lob passes alone. But outside of the playmaking, for now I'm just really hoping that Giddy ends the season with his 3.5 percentage landing at least in the low 30%. Well, that's not a huge leap for him, but that would already indicate that Giddy's progressing in terms of his most notable swing skill, which is what would also ultimately determine whether he ends up as a star level player or not. So thank you guys if you made it this far into the video, and as always, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as well. Again, this is Rero Balls, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.